Fetch it up. I'm Kirk Driscoll with Gundog Broker, and I'm here today with Ellis Howard and his dog Jimbo. Uh, Jimbo's Grand Hunting Retriever Champion, Upland Hunter, Master Hunter, and he happens to be the HRC Points Leader. All-time high point dog with 5,015 points, I believe, correct? That's correct. 5,015 points. So he is the HRC's Points Leader, and so we appreciate uh, Mr. Howard uh, getting, getting together with us today. We're at his home. and. Uh, you can see all of Jimbo's ribbons around behind us. You may not be able to see all of them in one shot here, but you will see them, we promise, all of them. And uh, we just wanted to talk with, uh, with Mr. Howard today about Jimbo and just find out more about the story, how he got him, their journey through to HRC, and uh, every, everything that we can. Uh, Jimbo right now, he was just telling me he's 14 years old, and he'll be 15 May 15th, correct? And right. so we just wanted to come out today and, and talk with him and, and let him introduce Jimbo to all of y'all. So, Ellis, if you could, uh, just kind of tell us who you are and how, how, how all this started for you. Well, Kirk, the way this thing started with me is uh, we know I, I came by Jimbo more or less kind of by accident. Uh, I had left my carpet shop one day and was headed toward downtown, down to, toward a new bank that had just been built. And I saw two big brown dogs in the road in front of me, and they went out of the road and came back into the road in front of the car in front of me. And the lady skidded on wheels to keep from hitting them. So I got out of the, I pulled up in the service station yard and got out and opened the back door of my work truck and told the old dogs, I says, kettle up. Never seen the dogs before, and they went right in my truck. Yep. Just like it would have been if they had been my dogs. Right. So, well, there was a policeman right there, and I asked him if he'd heard anything about any dogs being lost or anybody looking for any. And uh, nobody had heard anything about him, and so I said, well, I'm going to take the dogs and put them in a, my daughter's kennel. So if anybody's looking for them, have them to call me. So I carried them down to my daughter's house and put them in her kennel and uh, fed and watered them, took care of the dogs. And so this was about 9 o'clock in the morning, I think it was. And, Later in the afternoon, uh, the fact it's already dark, I got a phone call, uh, somebody looking for the dogs, and they said that the owner of the dog was Charlie Chase. And Charlie had, had to go into Savannah, and I wouldn't be back till the next day. And I said, well, that's fine. The dogs is shut up. They fed, watered, seen to. Charlie can get them when he comes home. So the next afternoon, I was... Uh, with a customer, I was inside my shop. It was about three o'clock, and uh, Charlie came. Was interested in wanting to pick up his dogs, and he called and wanted to. Know, also, he called and wanted to know what time could he pick them up. And I was with a customer, and so I told him what time he could pick the dogs up. But when you were in the floor covering business, you might get a customer to take ten minutes of your time. You might get a customer to take a half a day. Right. So the customers left in just a few minutes, and I went on out and got the dogs. And brought them back to my carpet shop. When I got back, Charlie was sitting there waiting on me. And uh, he wanted to know how much did he owe me. Well, the night before, there was a hundred dollars reward out for the dogs. And so, but in the meanwhile, Charlie had called my wife and was talking with her, and he offered her a puppy. And she says, no, thank you. Well, I didn't know she'd said, no, thank you. <laughs> so when Charlie asked, what did he owe? I thought about the $100, and I thought about the puppy. I said, well, my daughter might want another puppy. So I said, what about the puppy? A boy puppy. He said, okay, I'll be back in about 20 minutes. So finally, when he came back, he had this puppy with him, boy puppy which I asked for if he had one. He had fed it all he'd eat. So tummy was pooped out. He wasn't about nine weeks old. So the Olympics was going on in Atlanta. And he was having problems selling the puppies, you know. So 
I, I begin to wonder if I should have taken the puppy or should not have taken the puppy. And I brought it home, put it in the utility room here with my little speckle dog, because that's where she stayed at night. Next morning, it was bad in that utility room. He was not half broke. Uh -huh. So from that point on, I would start taking him to work with me. And uh, I'd tie him out to a dogwood tree in the backyard. And, you know, I began to get, begin to like the puppy. He was pretty ugly, pop belly, wasn't all that fat. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'd walk him at night when I'd come in. I could walk him and he'd sit down. When I'd stop, he'd sit down. We would uh, start walking again, and he'd walk some more. I'd stop, and he'd sit down. So I thought he was that lazy. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, as time began to roll on, I started throwing some things for him, and he'd go get them, bring them back to me. And um, I told his friend of mine, Jack Noonan, about the puppy, and Jack came and took a look at him. He said, well, that's a pretty dog. And... So I'd toss a stick, he'd go get the stick and bring it back. So I'd throw a stick up on top of a trash pile back on my neighbor's property. He went up, went on top of the trash pile, and went down in the trash pile, dug his way down into it, got the same stick that I threw, and brought it out. <coughs> so I began to like the little old puppy more and more, more and more. But I kept thinking I was going to give him back to Charlie. You know, hey, I didn't want Charlie's dog. My daughter didn't want him when she came back off vacation. She wouldn't have him. And, well, I took him to the vet. The vet asked me, says, where did you get this puppy? I told her. She says, Charlie was asking $400 for that puppy. Well, I knew then I was going to give the puppy back to him. In the meanwhile, Charlie had let the mama dog and daddy dog, the mama dog especially, got back in the road and um, got hit with a car. Had a pretty good sized vet bell. I said, no, nah, I'm not going to let Charlie have the dog back. Yes, I am. She got hit the second time. No, I don't think I'm going to let Charlie have it back. Yes, I am. I'm going to let him have it. Dove season was fixing to open and the puppy got to it was. Like about three or four days being four months old when dove season was opening up. So I introduced D uh, Jimbo to Dove on Saturday morning. Never had a bird in his mouth. Of course, I managed to find a dove, you know, and I introduced him to the bird. Took him dove shooting that afternoon. He retrieved 11 doves for me. The first time out. First time out. Like three or four days being four months old. Then I said, no, I don't think Charlie's going to get his dog back. <laughs> Fetch it up.